these decisions that we're making. What data do we actually need? What are we trying to achieve in the long run? And make sure that all of the different business units within the business all the different departments are all aligned on, on what you're trying to get to because it's amazing how much impact one little thing can have. On Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now, here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm Elevate IQ. Forecasts are often wrong, but not planning in the fear of forecasts being wrong is like operating in dark. Some companies are likely to be slightly more mature in planning, while others might not be as sophisticated. The same thing goes for the industries as well. Planning is must-have in certain industries, but not so much with other industries. Regardless of how much time and money you invest in planning, not planning is not smart. In today's episode, our guest, Lee Bartlett, discusses the strategies for building SNOP framework. He also discusses why formalized planning is absolutely essential for most organizations, regardless of whether they are retail or distribution-centric organizations or not. He also discusses several stories where adoption could be equally critical for the forecast to work and to be implemented inside an organization. Let me introduce Lee to you. Australian family man who loves camping, forwarding, and exploring his vast country. Lee Bartlett has 25 years of supply chain experience from store man, inventory control, purchasing, supply, and demand planning. He has experience with three ERP implementation projects and many more third-party software projects. He loves helping teams create the environment for learning and growth. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hey, Lee. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sam. Glad to be here. Yeah, and I am super glad to have you as well. You know, your experience in supply chain, demand planning, it's always, always interesting. And I know that you have some stories as well. So we are super excited to dig into those. Before we do that, do you want to start with your uh, quick intro and what you are focusing on these days? Well, quick intro. Uh, For me, uh, (laughs) yeah. New Zealander, uh, and then moved to Australia when I was younger. So a, a token Aussie, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, family man, and and you know grew up here and and had kids young, and and we love getting out and exploring this this yep. huge country. Um, we love love the camping and and you know getting out in nature, and it, I think it's always important to um, while we've all got our own professional life and busy, yep. you need that, those kind of uh, you need those things to de-stress, um, and and it's good to get out in nature as as often as we can, even if it's perhaps not as often as we'd like. Um, for me, twenty five years now of of supply chain experience. Yeah. Um, it, I didn't realise that it got to to twenty five, but you add up the numbers, and there you go. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> um, absolutely, absolutely, it does. Uh, so I I I literally walked in very lucky into a, um, supply chain related roles. Um, I, I finished high school. Um, and one of my sister's friends' mums came around and knocked on the door and said, do you want a job? Uh, they were looking for people. Um, so I was like, yes, awesome. This works out really well. Um, so I started my career working um, in a manufacturing um, environment. Um, they were just create, uh, making and printing the ear tags that go on cattle and sheep and other things. Hmm. And, and you know, that was an interesting start uh, involved, uh, you know, through the different cycle there. Um, but but moved on from that pretty quickly, and and then I've worked in automotive uh, aftermarket parts um, businesses for quite some time. Uh, we started a, as a storeman, literally picking orders, picking orders, packing, receiving out the door. Um, worked through inventory control, um, gave my hand at, at customer service and sales for for a short time. Um, did that for about six months, and and decided that wasn't for me. 
um, <clears throat> wasn't quite the, the right fit. Um, you know, if my sales skills are probably not the, the, the best um, and they could, they could be, could be better. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's not much fun having to deal with angry customers at times. And I, I, I applaud those kept that can do that very well. Uh, so I moved through, you know, imagery manager roles, uh, purchasing roles, all of those related things, and then you know, started for uh, another business called Lincoln Century um, and a demand role. Um, work through demand manager, um, demand planning um, activities, a couple of different implementations in that business, uh, and then, you know, planning manager. So basically anything supply chain related, um, being involved in supply, demand, planning, you know, network design, all of those wonderful, wonderful and critically important things, especially here in Australia and, again, over in the US, very big countries and complex to move yeah. things around. And then at the moment, I guess I left uh, that business after 15 years a, a few months ago. Been doing a little bit of short-term work um, for other parts of the broader Dulux group. Uh, and next week, excitingly, finally found a role that I was I was happy with and starting in a new role on Monday. Congratulations. Uh, that's very exciting. Oh. And uh, I would definitely love to uh, get out more uh, in nature myself. I mean, I typically um, struggle to find time, I guess. I, I need to find more. So mm. very, uh, very interesting bit there. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, we need to dig a little bit more into your uh, planning role uh, uh, as well, uh, you know, that could be very interesting in general, uh, you know, from the job perspective. Uh, it's always exciting what goes in to make sure that planning is going to work, which typically does not work. <laughs> well, that's the one thing they say about forecasting. <laughs> the, the only guarantee is that it, it's wrong. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it could mm. be fun, right? Uh, before mm. we peel into that, we have one of the standard questions that we ask every single guest, and that is going to be, your perspective on business growth. My perspective on business growth. Um, look, it's it's a it's a it's a requirement that almost anywhere you you go these days, it's you you don't find a business who's or too many businesses who are happy with without growth. Yeah. Um, and it's been an interesting couple of years. Every business has had some significant differences over the the period of of COVID. Um, a lot of businesses we knew you know struggled immensely uh, and then others had a had a you know a strong growth um so here in australia um the business i work for lincoln century we sold a lot of hardware products into the building industry um and it, and it ebbed and flowed and, but generally the business did quite well uh, but we were a subsidiary of of dulux group so the the paints manufacturer here in australia uh and particularly when covid and everybody went into lockdown everybody was at home wanting something to do yeah. So all of a sudden, home renovations um, went crazy, uh, and and paint sales went through the roof. So it's it's interesting those kind of scenarios whereby you get those short term huge whips that nobody had any chance at all of planning in, in advance, <laughs> and you you just literally have to react so quickly and make some quick assumptions as to what's going to happen into the future. So there's there's some interesting experiences I think everybody's had over the the last few years. Um, but I, th I think the the key to to all of that growth yeah. uh, is is people, um, and and without the people in a business, it, you, you can't achieve those goals or you know exceed them into the future. Um, so for for me, who's been in leadership roles for for quite some time in businesses now, you've really got to put some um, time and effort to help your people grow um, and learn. And, and I really like. You know, stepping back and and creating the the time and 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 energy to be able to <clears throat> to enable people to to learn and grow and understand what their strengths are, um, so that they can you know really achieve their goals moving forward. And if you can get the people doing that, then I think I think all the growth within a business just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could not agree more. I, I think it's all about people. The growth is going to be about people as well, really empowering them with the right information. Mm -hmm. And I guess in your role uh, as the planner, the information is always uh, going to be critical. Uh, so let's talk, uh, you know, about planning a little bit. And I don't know if you're open to touching on different industries and the company size. In my mind, some companies are sort of mature with planning. Some companies understand what planning really means. Some don't plan at all they don't have to uh you know so where does the boundary start when it comes to planning and at what stage they have to plan 
before they run into some sort of supply chain challenges. Uh, do you have any perspective on that by any chance? Uh, these days, it's it's if you want to get the right results and really help the business deliver, um, you know, really strong profitability, you have to have some kind of planning process yeah. pretty quickly in a in a small business. Um, and and if you're a large business and don't have a mature planning process, the 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 opportunity there is is massive. Um, that's if you don't get the planning process right, there's implications throughout the whole business. And and ultimately, uh, you're not going to service your customers as well as you should be yeah. uh, if you don't have a mature planning process in place. And over the course of my career, I've seen everything from, you know, literally people making manual mistakes and, and doing things on a bit of paper when I first started to spreadsheets and, and multiple different systems, um, you know, to the point... <laughs> It's when I uh, was working through with with Lincoln Century, we did a demand solutions, which is a third party software yeah. uh, implementation, um, and and that for us made a significant difference uh, in terms of um, demand planning. Our inventory reduced by thirty yeah. percent, um, and we increased and we increased our service levels from in the eighties to the high nineties. So. That just shows the the capability of of you know if you get if you get the right software people and process in place the significant difference that that can make to a business. Yeah, so very interesting uh, story there as well as company and thirty percent uh, inventory results is obviously substantially beneficial because that directly translates into your financials. Uh, but, you know, the businesses that we, and I don't know, you know, which industry this business was in, you know, so obviously that is always beneficial. You know, some of the businesses that we deal with, for example, let's say if you are talking about some of the manufacturing shops, sure, we all are going to claim that they are really good at planning or they really do plan. But at the same time, you know, they might be doing planning based on the order. So depending upon the business type, if you are going to be more in the, let's say, make to stock or CPG, FMCG uh, space there, you are definitely, definitely going to plan because of the volume that you have. But then you also have some of the manufacturing spaces where, let's say, they might be doing very uh, long lead projects and they probably don't have to plan. Uh, you know, there are a lot of different manufacturing shops. So I don't know, let's say if you were sort of going to advise these companies uh, on the planning journey, do you see the role of planning for these guys as well uh, or or not? Look, pl planning is critically important no matter what you do. Um, yeah. And even over, over COVID, we've, we've found out that uh, if you don't have some idea of how long it takes to get your goods and when you're going to uh, get them through your whole supply chain, yeah, um, then your your customer service is just going to suffer uh, yeah. immensely. Yeah, so you, you have to have some kind of planning and process, even if you're a make to order type business. Um, it, you know, during COVID, I've, I've seen businesses and and the ones that I was involved in with lead times that blew out from three months to eight months. Yeah, so. So managing those those kind of things is really really important, and reacting to that um, to make sure you can plan in advance. Um, so it, it, those kind of situations where you've promised certain lead times to customers in the past, yeah, I, I, you know, what do you do as a business to as a strategy moving forward? Do you then go, oh, sorry, customer, I can't give you anything for twelve months anymore, <laughs> or do you change strategy slightly to you know maybe expedite that that lead time makes a few changes in your supply chain manage your you know relationships with your supply partners yeah. more effectively to be able to you know get, <laughs> to get the right result um moving forward so i think no, no matter what type of business you have there there's yeah. absolutely some kind of planning um even if you again in the make to order type product you've got consumables that you use in a workshop yeah if some of those, if you don't have drill bits or, you know, safety equipment, if you don't have those in place, then you can't do the work. So you, you have to have those kind of things in place. And it, and it can be as simple as a, you know, a Kanban type system or, you know, but that's still planning. You've still got to decide as to how, to how you action that when you do certain activities. 
Yeah, I mean, and com- I completely agree that everybody is going to do some sort of planning and they all have some sort of planning in place. How effective they are going to be with planning is going to be questionable, I guess. Uh, you know, and one of the challenges that we typically come across, uh, why these companies struggle, number one, finding the right definition of the SKU. And I don't know if you have done any sort of work where you had to re-normalize these SKUs because, you know, if there is going to be a lot of duplication across the SKU mix, uh, you know, if you cannot really confident say okay what is a real product that you have uh you know or what is going in inside the product uh if your revisions are going to be all over the place you know uh, it becomes very 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 hard to sort of plan just because you don't understand what your foundational element is so that is number one problem the number two problem that and you are talking about lead times now if your skew mix is going to be let's say a hundred thousand SKUs, and doing that for the first time especially in the smb space and i don't know if you have ever sort of dealt in the smb space that first cut okay where you have to specify lead time for every single part (laughs) that's very 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 difficult for business to figure out the whole supply chain once you have that then then only you are going to know how long each of the product is going to take how long each of the delivery is going to take but that first thing i mean they kind of know they somehow figured out how to deliver (laughs) but they don't necessarily have this mapped out uh, you know at the system level as well as the process level i guess i don't know uh, you have any comments there Uh my immediate thoughts are, go to some of the ERP implementations that I've I've been through. Yeah. Um, because the the significant portion of of the initial processes and that is around data and integrity. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's incredible that how much data you actually need for an ERP system like SAP. Yeah. There is so many fields and so much data there to get right if you want to get your planning and all of the other relevant activity yeah. correct. So, you know, you've you've got to get all of the, you know, lead times is just the beginning. There's so much more <laughs> involved in there, particularly when you get involved in warehouse management. You've got to get all your weights and measures and, um, you know, you, you then you look at your route planning of how you're going to get goods across the country from internally and externally. Yeah. Um, th- there's so much data to, to think about. And, and then when you get to your demand planning piece, and, I, and I've seen it through the businesses that I've worked in, is that you've got to have data um, aligned, which which makes sense. Um, one of the initial troubles I had um, yeah. trying to get an SNOP process up and running um, at, at Lincoln Century was our, our demand software, the way we'd implemented the data um, and presented that in the third-party software, didn't match how we did our sales budget processing. Yeah. So how can how can you get salespeople engaged in a process when the data doesn't align? Yeah. Makes it incredibly difficult. So you've really got to sit back and think before you go through all these processes, you know, what's the implications of these decisions that we're making? What data do we actually need? Um, what are we trying to achieve uh, in, in the long run? Um, and make sure that all of the different business units within the business all the different departments are all aligned on on what you're trying to get to because it's amazing how much impact one little thing can have on others. Yeah. So tell us more about, you know, why it was not aligned uh, overall from the data perspective and what steps did you have to take to make sure that is going to be aligned? And obviously the sales team need to agree that it is aligned. Otherwise, it's not going to fly, right? So uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us more. Uh, so the, the challenge we had was... It was okay at this the SKU um, location level, yeah, um, which is great. But when you're looking at a distribution business um, with many locations, many SKUs, that's a significant amount of detail. Yeah. So you can't be spending too much time in that in that detail. You need to bring that up to other um, levels. Um, so in the demand planning software, um, we were looking at the the material. What is the material, and how do we use it, and how do we you know how do we dispatch it or, or get it to our customers more of a supply chain thinking yeah unfortunately that's not how the the in the business how the sales budgets were were put together and how the sales team was measured so they were measured on on regional areas yeah um, customers were, were given uh you know a, a location and and given uh, it was different hierarchies so when you tried to look at how many sales do i do for this plant or, or location yeah. It didn't match up with the sales activity and, and where the sales team were responsible for managing those customers. Got so it. if you're trying to present data at a at a hierarchical 
level, you know, you'd limit the amount of data sets you want to look at in an SNOP process, but then if they don't align and there's gaps, people start questioning the integrity of the data and uh, it just creates <laughs> an impossible task to try and get people on the same page um, and moving forward with with what the the future is because yeah. then everybody is simply focused on, hang on, this isn't right, and then everybody's then looking in the past, whereas the whole point of planning is looking into the future and getting ourselves yeah. prepared for what's coming next. So getting that, that data set aligned from the start and making sure that you cover those scenarios and other parts of the business are involved is really, really important. And for me, it took quite some time and another system implementation to to actually reset that data um, yeah. and make sure that we had everything available to be able to present that back to the business so that it made sense to the people that were looking at it. Yeah, so very interesting. So in this particular case, did you have to realign the data with their expectations, meaning, I mean, they were, their territories were assigned based on different regions, I guess that was the problem. And then you had the location, which had different coverage overall. So they didn't sort of match one to one. And that's where the disconnect was. Yeah. So did you have to align the territory or did you have to design your demand forecast based on those territories? So it might be easier for them to be able to relate with them. And how easy was that process? What did you have to do overall? Was it just a software change? Or did you have to make any sort of uh, process changes as well there? We went through another software implementation later um, yeah. down the track. We, we moved to the SAP IVP um, product, uh, which enabled you know, a number of different changes within the business. Uh, but at that point in time, we did stop, reflect and, and think about what we actually needed and what we were trying to achieve moving forward. Um, and one of the important pieces was the data. What data did we need? Um, so that we, at that point in time, we, we worked with, the business and with the IT team to specify exactly what we need to get the outcomes that we were looking for. And that did require uh, additional data sets, making sure that we had all of the relevant information available so that we could, you know, cut the data a million different ways, but it still held up, still had the right integrity. We could display it how it might make sense to someone in planning and supply chain, but also then drop another field in and make it make sense to the sales team. So we had that flexibility moving forward. Yeah, so very interesting story there. So I think overall, when you look at the planning exercise, and I don't know what has been your experience, uh, in my mind, uh, demand is still easier. Uh, and the reason for that is because I, it might be harder to get it right, I guess, uh, just because you don't know uh, what your demand is going to be. Uh, but overall, at least, you know, looking outwards, uh, you know, when you are going to be looking at your demand sources, you are going to have certain number of channels. Uh, you are going to have defined number of customers who are sort of driving the demand. Um, so from that perspective, at least the demand planning is going to be easier. Supply planning could be even more challenging. And I don't know if you spend time in the supply chain planning as well. Uh, you know, how do you sort of balance those? Any any sort of challenges there that you have faced? Yeah, it's, supply planning is always a challenge. And, it, you know, it's, it's never going to be perfect. Um, but you know, in my experience, we were getting pretty good in our in our business, and we were starting to to get high, you know, ninety eight plus percent availability within our business. And then COVID hit, and yeah. everything changed. <laughs> so anything that you thought was was great it was completely blown up. Yeah. Um. So it was it was literally a, a new world. Um. And for a lot of businesses and a lot of people I know in the supply chain space. As much as you've focused on planning and and you know being really future focused um, for a, for a long long time, um, we just about everybody had to stop and be very reactive for a certain period because things were start changing so rapidly. Um, you really had to be adaptable um, and and make changes on the fly. Um, one of the important pieces there, I think, I think businesses that did well was spend a little bit of time up front forming some ideas and assumptions as to what was going to happen yeah, and making a decision and backing yourself on it. Because if, if you didn't do that early enough, then there was, you know, significant implications to your inventory and availability later down the track. Um, there's always going to be a, a cost and a risk for, for making some of those decisions. Um, but but it, it had it had to be done. And for those businesses that, that I've talked to that didn't make decisions quick enough, yeah. Um. Then, then there's, you know, there's there's significant ramifications for those businesses that is still having impact today. Um. So supply planning has certainly been an interesting topic over the last few years. 
Um, if you'd asked me this question, you know, four years ago, then it probably wouldn't have been quite as quite as difficult from from my experience. But yeah, it's certainly been challenging over the last few years. Did wildly varying lead times all over the place. Um, you know, price and availability um, significantly problematic. Um, we had major vendors where we simply couldn't even get what we wanted at all. Um, just wasn't going to happen. Um, <laughs> You know the the impacts of of raw materials, steel pricing and availability over the last few years has has certainly been significant. Um, so, so, so supply planning has certainly been much more reactive. Yeah. Um, but I think most people have have, have learnt from that experience uh, and hopefully got into the habit of making decisions a little bit more quickly um, and backing yourself. It's that whole thing that you go back to don't aim for perfection aim for excellence because if you if you aim for perfection over the last few years you'd be sorely disappointed yeah could not agree more uh, and uh, you mentioned some of the things about the network planning as well and i don't know how complex your network was in general you know for a distribution business and you mentioned that this was primarily a distribution business you know for distribution business it might be even harder because you have so many different locations and you have to plan across these locations how your materials are going to be shipped and you have to make sure that they are going to be replenished uh, timely um so tell us a little bit about uh, you know how do you sort of approach uh, this kind of planning you know what are going to be different variables that you are going to be looking at um, to plan for the network i don't know if you have had any sort of learnings from your experience that you might be able to share in terms of where do you start you know what kind of problems you have solved so yeah whatever you can share but so it's a, it's an interesting question again australia is a big vast country with lots of locations um and and our business had a lot of regional uh locations um so moving the product around was quite a, a costly expense and you wanted to get that right yeah um so you know there, there was a bit of time and effort that you have to go through to to optimize um, particularly in port products where we're getting them in from overseas yeah um you know we've got uh you know the the three major east coast locations in australia and then you've got perth over in the west you know and the volume over there is significantly less so trying to manage um how you move goods around the country is you know critically important um so there's quite a bit of time and effort that has to go into what's the right location to to purchase goods into do you purchase goods into multiple locations and then distribute um or do you only have the volume for one depends yeah. on minimum water volumes and, and requirements from your vendor um you know you, you've got to bring in container loads of of goods from overseas you know for some vendors it's it was really easy for us we just get it into you know all the major dcs and move it around because the volume there makes sense but there's other there's other products whereby um you know a, a whole 40 foot container might be um five months worth of supply so to, you've got to balance the the desire of the inventory volumes and cost implications of that moving forward um we, versus you know <clears throat> buying it into one location in the country whether that be any of the three east coast dcs and distributing that depending on the volumes of of your customer requirements as well um because there's there's different um it's amazing the different range of products uh in the building industry within australia um yeah. so in in the south the window systems are different to what they are in the north so you get different product rates and different sales um th throughout the country so you've got different product ranges which have um you know optimization of holding more in certain locations and moving it via different ways so it becomes quite complex when you've got that amount of products moving around um so it does take quite a bit of effort by the the planners to review that and make sure that you keep that up to date and we're getting the optimal supply chain outcome um, and and ultimately managing the the cost the best we can to get the customer service outcomes that we're looking for yeah so very interesting so tell us more about the the process in terms of you know mm -hmm. so i know that you have mentioned that you need to be slightly more flexible with your planning you need to be slightly more reactive at times you know when there are going to be changes in the market but obviously you are going to have some sort of annual operating plan and then you are going to be uh, making changes to that right but then you have to also look at the order by order basis so let's say if you you were to share your 
planning philosophy in terms of how to approach this okay what is the right framework you know how often do you meet with your customers how often are you going to review your orders uh, you know in terms of planning uh, creating some sort of framework for planning that is going to number one work and number two that is going to be probably adaptable as well based on the situation so how do you create that framework uh, that's a really good good question um and uh, every business is going to be very different here in terms of what the framework is going to look like. Yeah. Um, so again, there's got to be a huge collaborative piece here to make sure that we, you get this right. Ultimately, it does start with business strategy and what we're trying to achieve. Um, do we have a customer service promise? Yeah. Um, if you know what you, you're trying to achieve to get the goods out to your customer in what time frame and what, you know, in, in what condition, what service rate, all of those things give us the opportunity to then start designing what the planning process looks like to be able to support that. If you don't have any of that information, then that makes it incredibly difficult. And I'd highly suggest you work with the business to be able to get that kind of information available and make sure that everybody's working towards achieving that. Yeah. Um, if you If you do manage to do that, um, then you've got a, a path forward. Um, so the, there's processes that you want to put put in place. Optimize the, your ERP systems the most you can, and try and get as much automation as you possibly can. Um, that's certainly been the key for me yeah, previously. Is that you want to try and get uh, as much as you can the system driving. So if you can get your system driving 98% of the outcomes and and getting the results that you, you're looking for, that enables you to then work on what's your exception identification process. How do we then flag what the problems are that need human intervention? Because we, we really need to focus on what's important. And for large businesses, even small businesses, where you've got lots and lots of different products or lots of different customers, you can't do everything. Um, or you'd have to have a team, a, a yeah. massive team to, to be able to be doing that these days. And that's that's just not, not cost effective. So if you can re really design your, your planning process to support the business strategy, um, make sure you've then got as much automation as possible in place to be able to support that. Um, that really then frees up the, the planning people to have a think about um, what's really important, identify exceptions, and then deal with those as they come up because th they might not fit the mould. There's always different ways of doing things. Um, there's you know large customer projects, which might mean you're doing something slightly different moving goods that would not be the normal way you do it within supply chain. Um, but if you've got the time um, and you've got the processes to be able to identify that, uh, then the people can get involved early enough um, and make sure that we get the results that we're looking for. Yeah, could not agree more. And I love that 98% number. And I don't know how many mm -hmm. customers really know how to measure that. Okay, if you ask them, okay, <laughs> what is your planning efficiency? So how do you start on the process of number one, coming up with that number? You know, I don't know where that is coming from. And, uh, you know, how to sort of measure that? Is that going to come from the system itself? So tell us, uh, number one, how to develop the KPI, how to measure, uh, you know, 98%. Uh, look, again, every business is going to be slightly different. So 98% might not be the right number for your business. Um, perhaps it might be 99.5% or it might be 80%, just depending yeah. on the, the, the type of the business. Um, but again, data integrity, so important. Um, and all of these KPIs and, and, and exceptions and other things that you've you've really got to do to manage this well, it's, it's all got to come out of your ERP or whatever. Um, system that you're using and that that data is is so critically important if you're trying to manage a kpi with data which is not clean then you're not going to be getting the the result that you're looking for so you've you've really got to make sure that all of your relevant master data and and um, transactional data is uh, reflecting what you want it to reflect uh, and giving you the right information once you've got that then it's all about specifying what that that KPI is and does that align with our, our strategy and our customer service promise. Um, every business, again, is going to be slightly different, yeah. uh, but we've got to use the, use the right tools to, um, to to measure the KPIs. And there's, there's so many great tools out there, whether that's, you know, reporting within own ERP systems, but, you know, most major businesses are, are going down the path of Power BI's or Tableau's or, or other uh, reporting softwares to create the dashboards to be able to automate the, the reporting of those KPIs moving forward. Um, and I think that's really another important piece of my learning over the last few years is the, making the most of the opportunity of that, because I've certainly seen from myself and my teams in the past spending way too much time 
in the devil of the detail of data, yeah. uh, whereby you can use these these software, the the new technology that's available to us these days, to to get that information at the click of a button. Um, so I think that's that's another really important thing that businesses should be focusing on. Yeah, could not agree more. I mean, that's really important. So that's it for today. Do you have any last minute closing thoughts or advice for our listeners by any chance? Oh, last minute closing thoughts. Look, to just make sure that we sit sit back and and take the time to to learn from all of these experiences. So there's there's been a lot of things that I've that I've worked through and covered off over uh, you know my career. But the most important thing I think is to make sure that you learn from it. So that next time it comes along, you, you know what you're in for. You know not not only what you want to achieve, but how you want to go about it. So some of the things that we've talked about today, to, if you've got an understanding of of your process and how you get to the end result, and make sure that you're collaborating and, and involving the right people in that process. So lots of opportunities to learn, and I highly encourage people to 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 take that time, reflect, learn. Uh, and involve other people in that process as well. Yeah, could not agree more. And my, my personal takeaway from this conversation is going to be find that 98%, whatever that is for you, define that and make sure you are measuring that as well. Anybody who does not know where they are overall from the measurement perspective, obviously they don't know if they can be more efficient. On that note, Lee, I want to thank you for your time. This has been a powerful episode. Thank you, Sam. Pleasure to be here, man. Of course. Thank you so much. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests and hopefully you learned something new today. If you would like to learn more about Lee, connect with and follow him on LinkedIn. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you and I hope to get you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.